you feel like you're not getting anywhere and you're not seeing the changes that you want in your life? You know, does it feel like that you deserve something way better, but it just isn't happening? Then you need to cut out this habit that's holding you back from a more fulfilling and meaningful existence immediately. So in this video, we'll be talking about that self-sabotaging habit and why you need to keep it away from you at all costs. Greetings, Niji. It is I again. I grant us peace, blessings, wisdom, harmony, and overstanding in Shamhara. I'm going to be talking about a habit that all of us that no longer wish to be mentally imprisoned need to cut. Is your life the way that you want it right now? I mean, your family life, your finances, love life. You see, your perfect situation it isn't going to be the same as your neighbors or your co-workers. It's going to be unique to you, Niji. You know, and I can see me on a farm with all of my people, you know, the youth playing outside, a nice sunny day, sun shining. I got a fresh ginger and pear juice with a bamboo straw, nice cigar, you know. What does an ideal day look like for you, Niji? Uh, let me know in the comments. So the habit that we as a people need to eliminate immediately is the bad habit of being under the spell of mental laziness, not thinking for yourself and blindly following others. Uh, building your life to represent what you're told is the ideal model for a respectable life. Going with the flow, if you will. Growing up, we're told, you know, drink your milk, you'll get strong bones. Eat meat so you get strong muscles. Get good grades so you can go to college. Go to college so you can get a good job. Go to work on time and bite your tongue when your boss says something demeaning to you. Pay your bills like a good boy or girl. You know, buy a house for 20% down. Uh, pay the remaining 80% and its interest over the remaining years of your life. And then when you die, you know, someone will purchase it for the remaining price that you owe the bank. You know, because you never really owned it to begin with. And, you know, let's look at the word mortgage. Uh, we break it down to more engage, uh, more from the, the Latin mortuous, uh, meaning dead. So you take mort, meaning dead, engage from the old French which means a pledge or a promise. So you see, when you live the model life, you know, we're told is the proper way, uh, you live a meaningless life, pledged to serve causes that you know not of until death. Clock in, clock out, eat, watch TV, go to sleep, shower, clock in, clock out, etc. repeat, repeat. Uh, whatever it takes, you don't want to be one of these mass-produced clones, Niji. And I hate to say it that way, but these people seem to just merely exist, almost as if they were just placed in this matrix as uh, extras or fillers on a set for this grand production, the grand play. Even the clone's opinions, of which he has so many, don't even seem to be his own. They're not even his own opinions. They're fabricated by the media and what the popular opinion is. Most people fall into this trap from the moment that they slide out of the yoni into this dimension because the people raising them are under the spell as well. You know, they don't mean any harm. They, they really don't, but they're under the spell as well. Mental laziness. Now, most people on the planet, you know, they're not living the life that they want to live. Okay, now hopefully that's not you, but statistically speaking, there's a high probability that that is you. So getting back to the point, most people are not living the life that they want to live. Yet, from a young age, we tend to mimic what we see in our environment. We trust the judgment of the adults around us uh, in the beginning years, you know. We ask for sound counsel from individuals that don't have a clue themselves, thinking that they have the answers. One would naturally assume that the vast majority of people couldn't all have it wrong, could they? You know, parents, grandparents, neighbors, the media... Uh, public schools and religious institutions, no, not them, not them, they could never be wrong, <laughs> uh, or could they? You know, in a perfect world, a child, when looking for sound advice on how to navigate this treacherous place, you know, would be able to trust parents, family members, religious leaders, uh, the school teachers, and other adults but in fact, these are the very people programming another clone. And they don't mean any harm by it. That's just how they are programmed as well. 
and it's designed so that you make as little to no ripple as possible in the fabric of space-time. They don't want you to make change. So these people that we trust, they're the ones planting these mental viruses of cognitive laziness. The preachers scare you with hell. The parents pass on the self-limiting beliefs to the subsequent generations. So most people fall under the spell of mental laziness by learning to do as the others in their environment. They don't question things. They obey. They conform. If they do question, they're punished. You know, when thinking outside of the box, sometimes they're shut down or told what they think is ridiculous. You know, children have spectacular imaginations and they're systematically told to bring it down a notch. Now, I won't say that school children aren't taught in schools. I won't go that far because they're definitely taught they truly are. They're taught not to think, taught to accept whatever they're told as divine truth. You know, the message sent to the young mind is, this is how life works. This is the right way. This is the wrong way. This is white. This is black. This is just training. Just how we train our non-human brothers and sisters. We call it domesticating. The average man and woman is living in a cattle-like state, whether he knows it or not. In fact, he's even seen as cattle by some of the elite. So all of this mental stimuli, it's conditioning. You know, it's designed to be this way. Why? You know, well, it's quite simple. It wouldn't be any stretch of the imagination to think that it would be easy to force free-thinking people to do what billions of clones do voluntarily every single day. They're slaves by choice. They poison themselves by choice with their selection of foods, messing with their biochemistry and their DNA. Mental laziness, you know, sheer ignorance. You know, you're not the least bit curious about what you're shoving down your gullet. So if you're eating trash, it's not going to be as easy to think clearly. So with trying to get rid of the habit of mental laziness, that's not going to help. Eating food is more intimate than sex, yet you'll go all in on some real questionable plates, if you know what I'm saying. You are what you eat, needs you. And so many of us are choosing garbage, and it's sad. You know, everyone has to learn, but when are we going to get it and say enough is enough? Don't we want happiness and fulfillment and health? Many are by choice living the life of the proletarian due to thinking, or uh, should I say not thinking, that there's any other option out of life. Simply because, well, everyone else does, and this is the way life is. You know, when we're submerged in this type of frequency, we must become in tune with that frequency to create the least amount of resistance in order just to make it on a day-by-day -day basis, keeping up with the rat race, which is of a low-level vibration, a low-level frequency. You know, and that type of thing keeps you away from creative abilities. Now you're getting the classic symptoms associated with these frequencies. Depression, anxiety, suicidal thoughts, laziness, apathy. Etc. You know, the ways that a clone are installed into his or her mental programming by the way of repetitive repetition. They repeat the same things over to you in the media. They play the same songs on the radio. They tell you the same message on the news. You see the same memes all the time. Now we're actually seeing the promos. So I, I want to show you what they look like. Uh, this is a compilation courtesy of Deadspin that's gone viral this weekend. Just a little taste of what these promos look like. The sharing of biased and false, false news, news has, has become, become all too common, common on, on social, social media. More alarming some media Unfortunately, some members of the media use their platforms to push their own personal bias and agenda to control exactly what people think. And this is extremely dangerous to our democracy. I think you get the idea there, what's going on. All these anchors and all these markets are required to read this script. Uh, it's a, attacking fake news, but really what it's doing, it's kind of like the Fox Fair and Balance slogan. Uh, it's a way of saying, we're fair, everybody else is biased. It's taking a page out of, out of Trump's playbook. And I've been talking to staffers in markets, uh, David, that say they're sickened by this, they're uncomfortable with it. Quote, my staff is up in arms about this. Uh, Zerwick, you're, you're in Baltimore. Sinclair is based right up the road. What's your impression? Brian, I've been reporting this story, as you know, since last summer. And, uh, 
And, uh, you know, I, my, my first concern was when they hired Boris Epstein from the Trump White House and made him the chief political analyst, made him a political analyst, and stations were dictated to carry his, what I think of, as talking points almost out of the Trump, uh, talking points almost out of the Trump White House. There's a lot of pushback. Look, I think uh, reporters and anchors, especially when you centralize a message, and this is what's important, Brian, if you are centralizing a political message to however many, more than 200 stations, I think it'll be if, if they get the FCC approval for this, to 200 stations, you have one of right. the great political messaging machines in the world. And especially, it's the local people, the people you see at the supermarket in Tulsa, Oklahoma, or, uh, or, or your hometown in Wisconsin, Madison, Wisconsin, who are delivering these messages. They're not people from New York or Washington who you can dismiss. Much right. more powerful. I think Sinclair has the potential for that, and I think in some ways people react to that when they see this. Look, this thing by Deadspin is a really clever piece of editing, but it powerfully states what people have been saying about the danger of centralized messaging if a broadcaster decides it wants to send out political messages that way. It's repetition. Repetition, just like in school. You, you were taught to repeat and memorize. That's what they're doing to you now. Now, uh, I don't know if I'm saying his name right, uh, Zibinu Brzezinski, uh, he served as a counselor to President Lyndon B. Johnson and he was also, uh, he worked for President Jimmy Carter as National Security Advisor. He quoted, today it is infinitely easier to kill one million people than to control one million people. That's his quote. So he most likely was being literal, but what else do they intend to kill? Kill the habit of critical thinking and independent thought? Kill the body through poisonous foods that cause cancer and heart disease? Kill the spirit to break you in. Kill your potential for creativity. You know, this habit is going to bring you into disharmonious environments, which is going to feel like a living hell. They try to scare you with hell afterlife when you're living in a hell on a day-to-day -day basis because you're on a frequency that is the hell frequency, the hell vibration. We're like radios. You tune into certain frequencies and you're going to get a certain channel. You're channeling that hell frequency. And don't even get started on things like procrastination, trust me. Procrastination in daily life will only intensify the unwanted results. It's like a magnifying glass. So, Niji, to avoid this habit, always be engaged in something that's definite and exact. Move with purpose. Know what it is that you want in life and move towards that. Uh, don't let the clones discourage you because they will and they'll try to talk you out of it. Uh, but that's just what they're programmed to do. So don't mind them. Don't take it personal. Don't even get angry with them. It's just that's all they know. That's what they're programmed to do. They don't know any better. Uh, you should have no desire to do as others do to simply avoid any real thinking. That's just mental laziness. You know, always be working towards your goals. Decide what your mission is. And when you fail uh, in the learning stages, because that, that happens, analyze what caused that failure and find an advantage that you could take from it. See what you could learn from your mistakes, Niji. Uh, and please recognize that you're pure energy. You're an energy being. And I seen this uh, thing floating around on the internet. Uh, and it said, your diet is not only what you eat. It is what you watch, what you listen to, what you read, the people you hang around. That one right there is deep. Uh, be mindful of the things that you put in your body emotionally, spiritually, and physically. So everything is energy. So when you mix and mingle with certain energies, that is altering your frequency. And ultimately, that's going to alter if you are going to be able to achieve getting to that place that you want to be in life. You know, you broadcast frequencies. Like I said, we're like radios. Uh, so that mission of yours, it needs to be broadcasted into the universe more often than not. So, for example, if you're married and they have this awareness as well, uh, you guys are truly in an optimal situation. Uh, when the two, three, or four of you are all in that same frequency, really and truly, a frequency that's in alignment with uh, where you guys all know where you want to go, you guys are effectively amplifying that frequency's intensity. 
getting things done more effectively and being able to provide a better example for the subsequent generations in doing so. You know, things like that, that's not something that we tend to seek out, but to play life so safe by doing what everyone else is doing is not living. It's a form of selling your soul. You know, but in this instance, it doesn't come with the cool cars and hated swimming pools. All it comes with is a meaningless life. It sounds like a bad deal to me. Now, you're wasting away, Niji, if, if this is what you're doing. So please come back to life. Come back to life with us. Lay those demons down on their back. May every obstacle in your path blaze down with the holy fire from within. Leave a fresh path for much less confusion. Just burn it down to ash. Have no mercy when it comes to this, Niji. The most powerful thing that you possess is the mind. Don't let them have it. Thank you so much, Niji. As always, feeling blessed. If you know a Niji that needs to hear the message in this video, make sure that you share it with them. And for more content on Shamhara Network TV, make sure that you press the subscribe button and ring that notification bell.